now, after this awesome talk um, with Rachel Williams, um, I, I would love to introduce you to our first panel of the day. And um, I love this panel because it's, it's full of amazing women. Um, uh, the title of the panel is Community Leading Entrepreneurship. And we have, uh, as a moderator, Carla Chaman, from uh, the founder of Newstas. Uh, we have uh, Gabriela uh, Chavez Lopez, president of the Latina Coalition in Silicon Valley. We have also Delbert Medina, executive director of Black and Brown Founders. And also Vanessa Ronghorst, CEO of Ronghorst Consulting LLC. How's everyone today? Feeling good. <laughs> good. Happy hey, Delbert. How are you? I'm trying to see. Sí, ¿cómo estás? It's good to see you. Muy bien, yeah, muy bien. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pleasure to, to, to have all of you here today. Thank you for the invitation, Micah. Quite exciting to be here. <laughs> I know that we're waiting for, for Vanessa, another panelist, but I don't know, uh, Carla, because you know, we have time constraints in this big event. If you want to actually start um, introducing and sharing a little bit the bios of uh, our panelists. Absolutely. So let me, you just mentioned the name, so I'm going to reverse. I'm not going to mention the name. I'm going to describe and then mention the name, okay? So she okay. is. By the way, I love the glasses, just to let you know. Just for you. <laughs> so, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for, for following us in this, what promises to be a very interesting, interesting panel. So she is a charismatic social entrepreneur, energized and inspired by pioneers and leaders of social change. She is the current president of the Latina Coalition of Coalition of Silicon Valley, a community-based organization that develops and strengthens the power of Latinas to advance their collective success through sisterhood, leadership, and civic management. She is Gabriela Chavez Lopez. Hi, Gabriela. Thank you for being with us today. Hello, Carla. Thank you so much for having me. She is a thinker, leader, and speaker. She has worked on creating systems for equity in the startup ecosystem for the last nine years. She is the executive director of Black and Brown Funders, an NGO that provides community education and access to Black and Latinx entrepreneurs, allowing them to launch and build tech businesses with modest resources. I am referring to Deldep Medina. Hello, Deldep. Buenos dias, buenas tardes, good afternoon, everybody. For those of you that are in Europe and other places, and good morning for the rest of you who are here in uh, the West Coast. Thank you for having me, Carla. Thank you so much. And now, the la last but not least, she is a problem solver committed to creating impact mechanisms to achieve environmental, social, and economic change. She is the CEO of Wrong Horse consulting which is a let me tell me if it is correct it's kind of a, a group of reflection led by indigenous women and she has been awarded with several mentions awards and and she is vanessa wrong horse hello vanessa how are you yeah, today. I'm very well. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here with this group of people. Thank you. So let's start. Let's start. This is a very interesting topic, very interesting session. And let me start by asking each of you a basic, which might seem a simple question, but we, we know that it is not. And it is about your own definition uh, of entrepreneurship. Because sometimes we tend to think about entrepreneurship as a label. I tend to think that it is a mindset. It does not matter where we are located, private sector, NGO, public sector, or being an entrepreneur itself or ourselves. But the definition and what makes us really an entrepreneur is the spirit, the essence of who we are. So let me turn 
uh, to Vanessa. If it is okay with you, let's start with you, Vanessa, then we move to Delder and then Gabriela. Hope it's okay with you. Okay, Vanessa, please. Yes, of course. Thank you. Um, I, you know, I, I think entrepreneurship for me has been a really new word. So still trying to wrap my own head around how that resonates. Um, for the work that we do here, mostly in North America, around indigenous entrepreneurship or indigenous like economies, um, actually the word entrepreneurship doesn't really connect. It doesn't really resonate. Rather, um, things like leader and you know so simply just business owner makes sense. But when you speak about it in that sort of broader idea around the mindset, um, you know I think as um, First Nations or indigenous communities to this place, the idea of being flexible and innovative and forward thinking and problem solving, um, it very much is part of like, I think the founding of this place in terms of ancestral knowledge, ancestral wisdom. Um, so for me, entrepreneurship, when I think particularly about indigenous business is really, um, is really about how we see the world around us from um, the bringing our ancestors with us so that we can be good ancestors for the future. And then entrepreneurship is just part of that continuum of thinking. Um, so it's not, it's not as defined and it's definitely from my perspective, not a business specific term. It really is a, you know, how do we continue to emerge into this next life, this next world? Um, and I think the tenets of entrepreneurship and how people utilize that mindset is historic, is like part of our DNA. It's just who we are. We've lost maybe touch with it because of, you know, other parts of colonization and capitalization in America, United States specifically, but it's coming back. So that would be my kind of sort of messy description of it. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Beautiful reflections, especially thinking of where we are, right, in the Americas, in all this fantastic continent with this level of heritage across the region. And what you're saying is so, so important because this mindset with flexibility, with innovation, has been demonstrated by our ancestors, as you said, the culture that we, each of us, being Latinas, uh, carry with, with with us in our DNA, as you said. And Vanessa, I will get back to you uh, after we hear uh, from Delbert and, and, and Gabriela about beautiful words. Thank you so much. Delbert. So first of all, I want to say thank you to all the organizers for putting this together and more importantly to Micah for putting, you know, thinking through. Like I really admire all three of you on this panel um, and it's an honor to be able to talk about some of these concepts and ideas but more importantly, the practices. Um, because to me, entrepreneurship is a practice, um, just like um, making sure that you're eating right and exercising and drinking water and taking breaks. Um, it is a way of being. People have been, as Vanessa pointed out, like trading and selling and engaging with each other in commerce throughout millennia, regardless of where you are or where your people are from. Um, the word entrepreneurship, I think, is a fancy label that somebody slapped onto a set of practices um, to be able to justify things like being exploitative of people. Um, we at Black and Brown Founders believe that entrepreneurship or the practice of creating businesses around tech and tech enabled businesses is a way of engaging in this work um, in the 21st century within a context of like, before people's tools were very different. Like when both my grandmothers had businesses and I, I highly admire and loved my grandmothers and still love them to this day, even though they've passed. And I think about like, they would just have a libretita, they would have their little thing and they would keep track of their, their numbers, right? They would be keeping track of what came in, what went out, who they needed, who needed to pay them, who they've given credit to, because you know, they would fiar, he owes me money. I would go with one of my grandmothers door to door, like knocking on doors, getting people to pay her uh, because she had given them credit. And they were like, okay, I gave you credit. It's time for you to pay. Today is payday. I know you have the money. Um, it taught me a lot about people and how people interact around that and how people interact around money. Um, and so I think like when I think of entrepreneurship, I, 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 I really... 
as a friend uh, used to say to me, like, it's a fancy French word that doesn't even exist in French anymore. Um, and so I think like as a concept overall, it's something that we, I'm really excited to see that we get to redefine in a way that makes sense for ourselves and our communities. Thank you so much, Adelda. This is very, very good and very inspiring. Again, going back to our ancestors, where we come from, and strong, courageous, and brave women. So we will go back and, and discuss these issues with, with you. And finally, Gabriela. Yeah, so I think for, for me, I've recently embraced this word because people would call me it before I called myself that. And so I always, I kind of thought about this question a lot. Well, what does it mean to me? And and for me, what I've found is it's it's just a way that I approach the world. And I think a lot of Latinas approach the world. They're natural problem solvers in their families, in their communities, in their workplaces. And so it's really that leader, that person that looks at something as status quo and realizes that it's not working and it's not working to for our communities it's not working for our families and they want to change it and so they come in with this creative idea or passion or we've called it all of these things over time and um, really a change maker someone who just isn't satisfied with the way things are currently are and um, and so for me it's it's about organizing it's about getting people behind your vision beside your vision supporting it elevating it and really leveraging resources so me with latina coalition um people have called me that and i've embraced it because i do get the practice like del del was saying um i do get the the ideas behind it and i think that in many ways latinas are just born and bred to be entrepreneurial in their in their way of life we just haven't called it that before and so i'm really excited to really um dive in deeper to the practice and at latina coalition we really like to expose our members to new ideas new mindsets new ways of approaching things and so um that's kind of what it means for me and i think it starts with us personally being able to understand sort of our natural inclinations and really sort of owning it and uh, just keep investing in it ourselves. So, so I'm excited to talk more about it, but you have the expertise on this panel to talk, to talk about this subject. So thank you. Excellent, thank you, Gabriela. And so basically we're talking about demystifying a little bit, breaking a little bit this idea of having a label and call us entrepreneur when in reality is embracing certain characteristics, certain, um, values, being flexible, being innovative, having the fire, you know, and, 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 and persistence to move forward. And that applies either if, if you come from the private sector, if you are in the public sector, if you decide to, to create your own business. I mean, I am the founder of, of, of Newstas, an NGO. We train, we provide, um, capa uh, we help. Uh, women with training programs how to achieve to the full potential in and in that journey of how to to achieve to the full potential whatever that is to work as a dependent and to work independently those values that we are all discussing right now are are more than ever present because that is what is going to help you to make that jump and really find who you are and how to contribute to, to the society, how to contribute to your family, how to contribute to the organizations. So, uh, so no more labels is what I am hearing, right, Delde? What, what is your, your, your sense? Well, I, I think it, there's a difference between claiming something and being able to step into your own power. And if saying I'm an entrepreneur helps you do that, then go ahead. Like I'm, I'm not one that, uh, I'm not about to become the label police because I just think that's silly. Um, but I think it's important for you to understand what the set of practices are and how you can engage with them. So as you were saying, regardless of where you are, like if you are working at a company and you are ambitious, how do you fulfill that ambition that you have? If you are ambitious um, in different ways of like, hey, I have this side hustle, I have this side business, I, I have this nine to five job, and now I have this other thing on the side. Um, how is it that you fulfill the ambitions that you have? Um, you know, the reality is that when women um, are working, we're not just working for ourselves, even when we're young, single women. Um, I've said this publicly, which was 
I think it's true for a lot of folks, which is like, even when I was young and I didn't have children, I still had family responsibilities. I'm the oldest daughter. And as a result of that, I had responsibilities to my family. So my paycheck wasn't just for me. It was for a series of other people because at one point I was earning more than my parents were earning. Um, that's not unusual when you go into uh, white collar, well-paying jobs, when you're the first generation um, to have a college degree. Um, those are experiences that are real. Um, and so it's important for you to fulfill your ambitions as a human being, but I also want to recognize that so often those ambitions are tied to community and tied to the people around you because you have a sense of responsibility to them and they have a sense of responsibility to you. Um, you know, and, and that being able to, from everything from elder care to child care uh, to sibling care, all of these things so often weigh upon ourselves. And so I think of women in particular, um, and I work primarily with Black and Latina and or Latina uh, entrepreneurs, um, our ambitions are different. The way that we want to see the world is different. The products and services that people are creating are different because the problems that we're facing are also different. They're not the usual problems. Um, I, I remember once I had um, an investor ask me to meet with this team here in San Francisco. They were creating some sort of technology around fertility for women and all of the team were men and they literally had just realized upon getting investment that they didn't have any women on their team and they were like what do we do and i was like uh, you return the money and sure enough that team did not last long um compared to a group of women that are looking at the same problem probably aren't going to get the same amount of funding but more importantly, are going to look at the problem in a different way and are going to create their company in a different way. Uh, the products and services that they're going to address are going to be different based upon their experiences. And in some ways, it's also your advantage. So yes, you might not have the capital up front that you want in the way that our male counterparts get, um, but the realities are that your ability to actually create something that has long lasting um, and that actually creates impact is much higher. Thank you, Del. The very nice, um, very nice reflection. And certainly, there are tons of studies that are demonstrated, demonstrating the value of real diversity and inclusion in every aspect of our economy. When you bring women to the table in the decision-making process, not only to to operate, not only to work, but in the decision-making process. And this is a very nice way to transition to the second question that I have. And I would like this time to start with Gabriela. It is leading by example, because a lot of what we have been discussing is leading by example. How, Gabriela, uh, in your organization and in your personal life, how do you lead by, by example uh, in achieving all these values, in achieving all these uh, aspects that we are discussing right now? Yeah, so I, mean, I think with, especially in the nonprofit space, you have a mission, right? So do what you say you do. <laughs> I think that then just stay committed to that and don't, you know, have mission drift and get into all of these different other things. I think you have to stay focused and dedicated to your mission and, and truly do really exemplify those values that you say are values of your organization. So for us, you know, one of the things is sisterhood. So we have to model sisterhood in the way that we operate as an organization, in the inclusive nature of our events, in the supportive nature and, and not holding each other back, but really helping each other uh, propel forward. So we and I leader have to model that in my everyday life. And so um, that's just something that you have to stay committed to those values, civic engagement. What does that mean? If we really engage in the community, that means that we're volunteering. That means that we're um, sharing opportunities to sit on, sit on boards and commissions, that we're making that uh, information readily available and not only to our members, but just to our greater community and our followers and, and making it accessible. Um, and then the leadership development piece, I mean, I myself have to push myself to develop in my own leadership and and challenge myself and 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 put myself in those uncomfortable positions that I might not be completely ready to do, but I feel like I have to just push myself. And so I think that as leaders and as professionals, we have to really model and exemplify that in which we seek to instill in others. And so um, 
that's one of the things for me and also be open to feedback right and so I'm always like a very good I'm my name's Gabby I talk a lot and um, but I have to be really mindful and intentional about listening and listening to the feedback that we get from our members and really just encouraging this constant feedback loop and asking questions um, is something where I've grown a lot as a leader and just really, you know, being very thoughtful and being very mindful of the feedback you're getting, you can do what you want with it. You have to distill it. It's not always good and, and relevant or even true. But I think that if you have like a trusted advisory group, you can bounce that feedback off of, um, of different folks. And so I just think you've got to start with yourself. That's all you can really control and just, and just be that model for others. And, um, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of great feedback from people that, you know, we're very collaborative. We're very, um, we're very, uh, what was the word that I was looking for? It was, we're very collaborative and we're very inclusive. So I think as much as you invite others to join your space and not have this like deficit mindset and just be like, there's abundance for all of us. There's so many Latinos to help in this Valley. Like we can all do it in different ways and we can collaborate. Um, I think that's something that, especially my generation as a millennial, we are so into collaboration. It's so natural for us. And so I really try to bring others along in that, um, in that kind of vision for what this organization could be, so. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Gabriela. And, and yes, it comes natural uh, in women to be collaborative. It, it is a, a, a characteristic, again, from, from our nature. So let me turn to, to Vanessa now. Same question, Vanessa, leading by example in your community with all the, 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 the background uh, that, that you have acquired. What, what are the key elements that, that you use, the key values, the key aspects that you use uh, to lead by example? <clears throat> I think, to, uh, you know, I think the thread for sure is that I think as um, women and brown women and women that have been pushed to the side, um, you know, our ability to be flexible, patient, and often like take on frontline trauma is, is really hard and is hard on us because we see it play out with our mothers, our grandmothers, our aunties, our nieces, our daughters. And so like, I think a lot about how do I lead? Obviously it's like, how do I not, how do I break those cycles of, the, of trauma? You know, how do I hold space in, how am I showing up for my sisters across from me at the table who also were going through the same thing? Uh, I think for me, it goes so much back to, not back to the values of like, why are we doing this work? What are we trying to get to? And from the work we've been building here in the Southwest region of the United States, and then really hoping to grow this nationally across the United States and, and into North America is that, um, that we have to bring women back into the circle because we've been pushed out. But that value of recognizing that a, the voice that we have from that part of our community has always been at the center of these conversations and in the United States with colonization, we have those conversations were effectively destroyed. And so we're rebuilding this idea of a balanced relationship in which we hold the spiritual energy of multiple genders in us because that's the power of the human soul. And so we try to show up by ensuring that we lift and amplify women's voices. We're lifting and amplifying sort of like an intergenerational approach to economy, an intergenerational approach to business. Um, we're also reminding the, our community, as well as investors and donors and future partners, which is we're not interested in recreating the same type of business or the same type of capital access that exists today. What we're trying to say is there is something deeper in us that um, recognize that the human form is just one part of a broader world of all living beings, but also that as community, if we do our jobs with the values in place, all people have, all people belong in this ecosystem of opportunity and this ecosystem of life. And that there is no 
real hierarchy over time, but rather if we're all actively pushing and developing into this together, and we're ensuring we're bringing women back into the circle on this, that we know communities will be cared for. We know our children will be cared for. We know our elders will be cared for. We know all of these things will happen because they are happening now. It's just we're so marginalized as a voice and as a strength. So when I think about how do we, how do I show up for that? Um, you know, it's an everyday intention that I sometimes don't do well. Um, but I wake up every morning with the goal of saying, you know, um, to what end and who benefits? And what is my harm in this place? And then what is my solution to addressing my own harm that I'm putting out there? Um, in some ways, to me, when I think about it in the, the scheme of entrepreneurship and economy, um, this stuff doesn't actually normally come into conversation because everyone's so focused on profit and revenue. But yet it's like if we're not investing in the whole human, the whole person, the whole heart, the whole community where we're from, business, entrepreneurship, economy doesn't mean anything because it starts with our health and our wealth. And it's health first and then wealth. Um, so that's kind of like the place that I've been coming from. And I'm really grateful to work primarily with indigenous women um, in a lot of our activities and work. And we don't just do indigenous work. We do, we take our indigenous ways of knowing and apply it across multiple sectors and activities because we see the, we see the replicability around this thinking. Um, so it's infused, right? Like it's not a one thing outside of me. It's, uh, you show up every day by putting one foot in front of you with the intention uh, that you know, and this is the last thing I'll say about it, is what you know is you won't be, I will never see the fruits of my labor. But that's okay, because I'm planning for my son's children's children's future. And I'm okay with that. But I think it's a very di big disconnect to how we're taught today. You're absolutely right, Vanessa. Thank you for those inspirational uh, words uh, and wisdom that you are sharing with with us time flies we have just four or five more minutes and if may i i would like to ask each of you for one specific actionable item that after this conversation and during our preparatory meetings we were discussing a little bit what will be that actionable item that you personally or you your community your organization has us in mind for 2021. So in one year from now, when we meet again, we can look back and say, this is what we said, this is what we wished, and look what we are now, what happened. So in, in less than 60 seconds, if each of you can tell us what will be that actionable item that you yourself or your organization can commit for 2021. Let's start with that. So first of all, I want to acknowledge the pandemic. <laughs> and I want to acknowledge the fact that we're all communicating via electronic mediums from all over the world. And so for 2021, to be able to remain safe and healthy, um, we're going to continue at Black and Brown Founders to do digital only content. So please come to our website. Um, please take, check out our uh, bootstrapping bootcamp. We have scholarships available for people. We're really going to try to scale our offers on our website so that people can connect with us uh, digitally and stay safe and healthy. Excellent. Thank you. Let's go with you, Gabby. Yeah, so I mean, I'm all about community. So engage in the community in any way that feels right to you. Um, learn about your local boards and commissions. Run for office if that's if, if you're just had it and you just, they can't figure it out, you yourself can run for office. Latina Coalition is there to train you, support you, um, and connect you to others that have successfully run for office. We've seen in our own local community, the success of that. So um, just engage in your community and, and volunteer for an organization that, that you believe in and um, that aligns with your values. Your time, talents, and treasures are so needed right now, especially as, entrepreneurs, business leaders, um, get out into the community and, and give back um, because again, you have so much to give, so. Thank you, Gabby. Vanessa. Thanks, um, yes to all of those things. And 
um, in this year, you know, my call to action is to do some learning and understanding of like, where do you live and how, how did that place become a place? I think part of us just are, we have a big disconnect in recognizing and reconciling how places become a place. Um, so that's one. And in that journey, you will learn about the first peoples of that land, whichever land you're on. The other one is invest in our leaders. If you have the resources, if you have the time, whether it's mentorship, coaching, or, or direct dollars, invest in the leaders. Yes, invest in our organizations, but our leaders are the ones who um, need the most support. Um, as you can imagine, leadership isn't easy and it's very lonely. And we need to be doubling down on those leaders, whether it's electoral opportunities, uh, leaders on new boards, leaders in new CEO, C-suite executive positions, invest in them. Uh, those movement creators um, need your help. Thank you very much, uh, Vanessa, Del Gabriela. I would like just to add two couple of things what we have heard today. So entrepreneurship goes beyond a label. It is embracing values. It is embracing certain characteristics that makes us successful in different aspects. That's in that necessarily needs to be a business entrepreneurship. It could be in our role as, as, as a mother, as a daughter, as a spouse, as a, or, or in our work environment, whatever that work environment is, public, private sector, NGO, association, whatever. So that is one big takeaway from today. And the second big takeaway, which is uh, going back to Vanessa's point, right? Invest in leaders, invest in women, invest in girls. And that is start by ourselves, investing on ourselves. Because we cannot only expect that others do that job for us. We need to create opportunities. We need to be responsible and we need to take whatever it is needed to really invest on ourselves. So I think that that more or less captured the conversation today. Time flies, Micah, I'm sorry. I, I could stay here one or two more hours, but we can't. No, no, no. I, I, I know. Thank you so much to all of you for inspiring us. And just let me uh, uh, say one thing. I have plans for all of you. And as you very well <laughs> said, uh, uh, Carla, uh, invest in women. So go to Heroica.com, check out the awesome projects from these women. And if you think that you can promote them in your social media or share one of your skills with them, they will be super thankful. Look at our chat. They're all saying, hey, how can I have one of them as my mentor? How can I, I get a, a hold of a, one of them actually to give me some kind of advice? I mean, everyone is awesome. And that's what we're trying to do here, build a community. So women with initiatives, ideas, and actually leaders they don't feel alone during this path okay so thank you so much for being here you know that you warm my heart all the time